Hello everybody and welcome! Kerbal Space Program 2 has received its next update. Version 0.1.3 is out since yesterday and it contains more than 160 changes to the game including bug fixes, performance optimizations and also some new things. But before we go into the good stuff, here is the bad stuff right out of the way. There is still no re-entry heat. Some long-time annoyances like the orbital decay bug didn't make it into this patch and to be fair they were not announced to be fixed yet. There is a new issue where the Mark 1 command pods doesn't experience drag on re-entry when pointed retrograde. They definitely have to fix that. And finally, people have reported engines not making any noise and the UI flickering, but updating graphics drivers and rebooting the PC seem to solve these. Personally, I haven't encountered either, but I thought I'd let you know should you run into these issues. Also some bad stuff, but not KSP2 related. YouTube appears to have silently unsubscribed a bunch of you from my channel, so please check if you're still subscribed and if not, well, you know what to do. Okay, so now let's look at the things that did get better with version 0.1.3 of Kerbal Space Program 2. First off, if you really want to dive into this, I have linked the patch notes in the description below, because I'm not going to go through 165 line items. If you want that kind of thing, sit in on an accounting lecture or something. Let's start with performance. And there is no way around it. It is better. A lot. None of the flight footage in this video is sped up in any way. This is how it was presented to me while playing. And I'm recording at 1440p and 60 frames per second. People seem to experience significantly smoother performance resulting in the game being more playable on more affordable graphics cards like a 1660 Super for example. For me it was the overall smoothness and consistency that made the experience a lot more palatable than with the previous builds. But I also have a pretty beefy PC, so let me know in the comments how KSP2 version 013 has treated you in this regard. Would love to hear from you. We also get a couple of new parts. Well, most of them will be familiar for veteran Kerbal Space Program players, but they got some upgrades. Let's start with the docking ports. We now get a shielded docking port and two inline docking ports. And here's something I've been waiting for for years in case P1. All three of these now have attachment points on the docking port. Look at that. I can even attach them to each other. It drove me mad in the original that this was not in the game from the beginning. Yes, you could mod this in easily, but why was it not stock? I'm glad that KSP2 has done this correctly right from the get-go. Then we have the air brakes. I didn't see any sneaky cracking graphics when they are deployed, but otherwise they appear to be like the ones we all know from KSP1. Except that you cannot define any control authority for them, even though they are filed under control surfaces. What does appear to be a bug with them is that they start moving when you perform roll maneuvers. Which is kind of strange, but yeah, that's how it is. Do they even work? I mean, slowing down vehicles when deployed. Well, in order to test this, I built this monstrosity here. Just a dumb booster with two identical vehicles attached to it. Release them and as soon as they start dropping, I turn on the air brakes for the one that's falling the fastest. And you can see it significantly reduces velocity for this craft while the other is plummeting to the ground. Nice. While we are still in the atmosphere, let's talk about wings. The developers have improved how these are attached and when they are put onto a fuselage they are not quite rigid and will not rip off as easily as before. The flapping here is due to the stability control misbehaving that hasn't been fixed yet unfortunately. But also here flying was a lot smoother than with previous builds of KSP2, as I already mentioned when talking about the performance stuff. Ok, let's get back to the new parts and this is interesting because we now have three very specialized engines. The Cornet, the Trumpet and the Tuba. 
all three take their design cues from the tried and true RL10 vacuum engine. And like it, all three are very efficient. Look at this, two identical vehicles, except on the left we have the previously most efficient Methalox engine, and on the right we have the new Tubo vacuum engine. The difference is roughly 600 meters per second of delta V, more than 10% on top of what the left vehicle has in reserve. And if you want to compare this to hydrogen vessels, it is a lot less bulky, because fossil fuels like methane have a higher energy density. Hydrogen is super efficient at half the mass, but it is three times as bulky. This is going to make you think about the best approach to design your vehicles depending on what type of mission you want to perform. And of course, what type of launch vehicles you can build to get into orbit. When I was testing the tuba, I noticed something. Listen closely before the engine starts to fire. That deployment sound effect does not just sound mechanical, it does sound a bit like a tuba. So I cobbled together this little weird thing and set each engine to an action group. Take a listen. With the right timing I think I could play some marching band tunes with this. Nah, not really, but this put a smile on my face and reminded me of two things. While we tend to talk about frames per second and physical accuracy of parts and how to behave, at the end of the day Kerbal Space Program, one and two alike, are supposed to be fun. And the second thing, the developers have not forgotten that. I mean, unless this is pure coincidence that each part of the brass band sounds like its corresponding namesake instrument. One curious item in the list of improvements for version 013 was this. Modding. This was the first time this has shown up in any of the patch notes, so maybe there is something on the way in regards to better mod support. The official stand so far is that officially mod support is not yet integrated, but that this change is there to help those to do it anyways. I don't really know what that item does, because I am not a modder. Let me know in the comments what you think about that, especially if you are a modder. Alright, this was a very quick first look at the current state of Coral Space Program 2 after patch 013, and I have to say that things seem to be moving in the right direction. Are they moving fast enough for me, a person that is pathologically impatient? No. Is everything already in place to fully replace KSP1? No and I didn't expect either to be. But maybe I can now finish my EVE return mission that I gave up on with the previous iteration of the game. Maybe we'll see that next week, or a week after, or sometime, I don't know yet. But what I hope is that the developers can manage to crank out quality updates at a steady pace. Let's see what the weekly info update on the forums will bring, because supposedly creative director Nate Simpson is going to talk about some of the items I mentioned in my negative section above, especially reentry heat and the orbital decay bug. Also, if you encounter any issues, here's how you can help get them resolved. The developers have improved the bug reporting form. You select what type of issue you encountered, enter a brief description and can upload files to enhance your report. One of the options is bug package and this can be used to upload a zip file created by the KSP2 bug packager that Linux Guru Gamer developed. Now complete with an installer and direct link to the form I just showed you. It also retrieves your system info and allows you to simply copy-paste your CPU, GPU and RAM data into the bug report form in detail. Here you can see me reporting the roll deploy bug for the air brakes. Hopefully it's not a duplicate already, or at least my video and data can provide some additional help fixing it. So what do you think about this latest update for KSP2? Can you see the good in there, or are you still waiting for some specific feature or bug fix that prevents you from enjoying the game in its current state? Again, would love to have a civil discussion with you guys down below in the comments or over on my Discord server. Link is in the description. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.